precipitation and the extent of any snowfall is just to highlight the potential for even colder conditions at the end of next week and the potential for snowfall, which of course in this country uh, in the winter. Yeah, it's that time, isn't it? It's uh, time we started preparing for winter touring. Um, in this video, we're going to look at some of the things we do to uh, make sure we can carry on winter touring and some of the precautions you might want to take. So I hope you find this useful and uh, here we go. Ready for anything. So the first thing is, and it, and it seems blooming obvious to say this, is to reduce your speed when you're driving in wintry conditions because you, you don't have that sort of extra distance that you do have during the summer for braking so if something unexpected happens in front of you you haven't got the same uh, short distance braking that you would have had during the summer so leave a gap between the vehicle in front leave a bigger gap than perhaps you would normally and slow down a bit it just seems a bit strange that we're always asking people to slow down, put the lights on. Uh, how many times do you see people going up and down the motorway without lights on? Just simple things. The other obvious thing is making sure your tyres are in good condition. Check that you've got uh, at least three millimetres of tread on your tyres and there's no cracks in the sidewall or, or anything like that. And if you're unsure about what sort of tyres to use, there are plenty of manufacturers who are doing, I think they're called cross-climate tyres now, or, or you can, of course, order a separate set of winter tyres, but check your tyres are in good condition. And in fact, some countries actually require you to have winter tyres uh, so if you are going to some of those countries in wintry conditions you might want to, you might need to fit winter tyres and the, the other thing is that if you're going to a really snowy area you might even want to consider snow chains I know I've bought some snow chains many years ago or a, a, a slightly easier version to fit are called snow socks I know it sounds a bit over dramatic, but you, you could have those in the van and just in case you get stuck anywhere where there has been heavy snowfall, you'd be glad you took them with you. Make sure you've got enough fuel before you set off. Uh, you never know how long you're going to get stuck somewhere and uh, you, might, uh, you might need that extra fuel to get you uh, to where you're going. So always make sure you've got enough fuel before you're setting off. I always try and make sure any journey, and particularly in winter, I've got a full fuel tank. I know it costs a fortune these days, so, uh, but yeah, it's worth considering filling up before you leave. Don't skimp on the maintenance. Um, maintenance is even more important during the winter months. Uh, a good service, uh, if you're not doing it yourself, make sure that you've win your washer bottles filled up with the correct sort of fluid, not just water, because water will freeze in your washer. Uh, wash your bottle uh, and make sure your engine is in service, the oil is good, uh, all the fluid levels are correct. You that. Don't forget you check your brake and if you've got uh, clutch fluid as well, don't forget to check those. Antifreeze, make sure you've got some antifreeze in your, um, your coolant system and make sure that's been looked after. Check your windscreen wipers. Uh, if you haven't changed them for a while, you might want to change them at the beginning of the winter. Make sure they haven't got any tears or, or, or they're leaving smears everywhere. Wipers are really important when it's chucking it down or when it's snowing. You want the windscreen to be able to clear quickly. So check your windscreen wipers. Clean your lights before you set off. Uh, you might want to give your motor arm a good clean before you set off anyway but at least check your lights are clear, uh, that they're not covered in muck so people can't see them. And do use them. Um, so many people seem to be driving along with just their driving lights on these days. It's not good enough. People can't see you on motorways when there's heavy spray and, or even snow. Lights. If you've been keeping your motorhome in storage, you might want to check the condition of your battery. Make sure it's fully charged before you set off. Uh, or like us, if you've been on the drive, you might want to top it up by connecting yourself to the mains for a while to make sure the batteries are charged up. And that's your vehicle battery and your leisure batteries. Now, there's a thing about traveling with water. Uh, if, you're travel if you want to take water with you, and there's a likelihood it could be freezing conditions. You might not want to have it in your water tank, in your motorhome. I know our water tank is actually underneath the motorhome, 
so it is quite exposed so if I was to leave water in there and we were driving along in freezing conditions there's danger that water could freeze so if there are freezing conditions what you might want to do is get a separate jerry can type uh, container and take some water with you at least then you'll be able to stop and you'll be able to wash have a wash or make make some coffee we've got a, 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 a plastic jerry can I'll show you a picture of that uh, that we can take and it's got a little tap on it and that's invaluable in the winter I would say if there's any danger of freezing don't travel with water in your tank drain your system down and I've got videos up here on how to drain your motorhome down for the winter and also you're saving weight as well uh, if it if the conditions are mild then a little water in the tank won't do any harm but certainly if it's freezing empty those tanks that's the wastewater and the fresh water make sure they're empty some tanks have uh, heaters in the tank now if you are traveling with water in the tank you might want to switch the tank heaters off and they will need at least 25 percent of the tank to be full with water so you do have to have a fair bit of water in the tank but if you if you're going to travel with water and there's a danger it's going to get colder switch the tank heaters on but like I said I would prefer to empty the tank and travel with no water and just have a little bit of water inside just in case you need that coffee or or you need to have a wash or whatever or, or flush the toilet that's the, the other reason you need water before you set off check the travel conditions have a look at where you're going what's the weather going to be like what's the traffic like where are the hold-ups uh, nothing worse than sitting in, in, a, in a traffic jam and if you can possibly uh, delay your journey because of traffic conditions then do that or go earlier set off very early if you can try and avoid the worst of the traffic have an emergency pack uh, this is really important warm clothes I mean I, I know we, we put clothes in our motorhome but you might want to consider getting that big coat out and I'm taking my big coat with me uh, and some warm clothing for when you're out and about or if you were to get stuck somewhere on a snowy hillside you might want to think about that have some food with you um, you don't know how long you might be stuck you might be stuck it's no fault of your own uh, and you want to have some food so I would have a supply a couple of days worth of food if necessary uh, and it's also a good idea to have like tins and things like emergency rations I know this sounds over dramatic but you never know uh, and have a think about you know ice scrapers perhaps shovels you know, I take a little shovel with me and uh, you can do that and uh, and perhaps some like I said blankets I know we've got duvets and all that sort of thing in the van but it's certainly worth considering having an emergency pack grip mats grip mats are really useful in the, in the winter if you if you're parking on grass a lot of campsites won't want you parking on grass during the winter but there'll be occasions perhaps in a muddy car park or something you might need grip mats We've always had grip mats available. Don't use them that often, but it's nice to have them and they don't take up a lot of space or weight. So think about getting some grip mats. Reduce the amount of weight you've got in the motorhome. I have a clear out when we have our habitation service and that was at the beginning of December and it's a chance to lose some of the weight. Do you really need to be taking chairs with you or barbecues or you know, generally some of the stuff that you would use during the winter? Perhaps you don't carry the awning around with you, take the awning out, leave it in the garage or the shed uh, and just reduce some of the weight. You don't really want to be using any more fuel than you need to be anyway but uh, it would just make a bit more space and a bit easier to drive. Our motorhome's fitted with a facility to have en route heating. Now I know not all motorhomes will have, have en route heating, but if you have got it, then by all means use it. It's, uh, it's, a, it's basically a crash sensor that's fitted to the, the gas uh, uh, system and in the event of emergency, it cuts off the gas. So it does mean that we can have the heating run by gas going along you can put it on fairly low so something like 16 degrees or something like that but it will keep the inside of the van warmer than it would be obviously if you were just relying on the cab heater uh, which is only really designed to heat of course the cab uh, so do use the en route heating if you've got the facility it's called a Truma CS system a crash sensor system you must have that fitted if you're going to use gas whilst you're going along
And it's important to mention that if you are using gas whilst you're going along, the fridge will run on gas if you stop. Now our fridge has a safety feature which switches the which won't switch the fridge on for 15 minutes after the engine stops. The idea is obviously if you were to pull into a petrol station, you don't want the fridge igniting and the possibility of a spark igniting fuel in the petrol station. That would be the worst scenario. There are stop caps at uh, stop taps that you can use to switch the gas supply off to the fridge. So if you're using on route heating, I would suggest switching off the gas supply to the fridge. And that's really sort of a double check. You never know, you might actually get stuck at a fuel station for ages. Now, I can't imagine possibly any scenario where you'd get stuck in a fuel station for ages, apart from putting petrol in the diesel tank. Hmm. Speaking of being on site, you might want to think about arriving earlier than perhaps you would do normally. You certainly want to arrive before it starts to get dark. There's nothing worse than stumbling about in the dark trying to figure out where the electricity plugs in or where you empty your water or anything like that. So try and arrive at least before half three in the winter because it's starting to get dark by then and a lot of campsites don't provide an awful lot of lighting or at least if you do arrive later, have a head torch or something with you. Now that's part of your emergency pack. The other thing you might want to make more use of are these things behind you, the, the blinds and the curtains. We've actually got curtains fitted. In the evening, you might want to draw the curtains. It will help keep the drafts down. You still get drafts through these blinds in the winter, so uh, you don't really want a lot of drafts coming in and cooling it down. So use the curtains and the blinds to keep you warmer when you're on site. And speaking of uh, of getting dark, what you really want to do is those outside jobs before it starts to get dark. So I'm talking about emptying the toilet before it gets dark and emptying the wastewater before it gets dark. You'll be glad you did. You know, if the toilet gets full at three o'clock in the morning on a cold, dark, wintry night, you won't be happy. Again, I've mentioned this before, but tank heaters. When you're on site and you've got some water in the tank, you might want to make sure that you've got tank heaters switched on and they can keep your tank uh, from freezing. So very important, if you've got tank heaters, use them. Speaking of gas, uh, you might want to make sure that you're using propane gas and not butane. Now, propane is the one that comes in the uh, red or well, the orange cylinders and butane generally comes in blue cylinders. Butane is not as good as uh, at gassing at lower temperatures as propane and it may not work sometimes in the cold which is about the last thing you need. So if you've got butane think about switching to propane. Fridge covers. Now there are some covers you can get and I'll, I'll put a little um, se uh, segment in here uh, that you can put over the vents of the external vents that is of your fridge. Now I tend to fit just one of these. I find that if I fit both of them the fridge doesn't cool as well. So I tend to fit the bottom one and what that helps do is it helps keep out the drafts and it helps the fridge not overcool. Because if it's really cold outside and the fridge is drawing in icy cold air then obviously there's a danger the fridge might get too cold. Again come back to clothing you might want to consider extra layers of clothing or warmer clothing, get the big coat out, or you might want to increase the tog on your duvet. Tailor-made screen covers. We've always used tailor-made screen covers. They help keep the cab inside a lot warmer. They deal with condensation uh, better as well, and they prevent condensation forming on the inside of the windscreen. So when you take them off, you'll find there's no condensation that you need to clear. Now, if you haven't got cab covers, have a look at getting one of these uh, windscreen uh, um, uh, window cleaners. Um, Karcher do, do one, and it, it's a vacuum, and it can vacuum the condensation away. And that's especially useful if you have not been able to use your screen covers. Perhaps you've parked in a car park somewhere, and you've not been able to put your screen covers on. You can use the Karcher to clear the condensation before you set off. Don't do it whilst you're going along either. Some good footwear. You might want to invest in a decent set of wellies or a decent set of hiking boots, but uh, you'll be glad you did. You don't want to be walking around in the snow on in flip-flops sensible footwear this is a good tip and it's it's lifting 
your cable, your electricity cable, when you're on a campsite every so often, because if it's really cold, you don't want your cable freezing to the ground. The snow can form around it, ice can form around it, and you have a terrible job picking it up. So perhaps when you're doing those outside jobs last thing at night, just move your cable a, 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 about a bit and make sure it's not sticking and freezing to the ground. Oh, and please don't leave it coiled up. I see so many people leaving the electricity in a tight coil uh, even in this sort of cold weather, that, especially if you've got all the heating on and you've got it on full pelt, that coil and electricity will warm up the cable and uh, there have been cases of the cable and the coil catching fire and setting fire to the motorhome and caravan above it. So please don't coil up your cable. I know the Car Caravan and Motorhome Club have been, had a campaign to try and help people realise the dangers of coiling up your cable. So don't do it. Uh, and when you're heading to your destinations, check the weather forecast. And some of the places you might want to go in the winter, just remember there's, there's, um, there's a lot less people around and beaches are open for dogs and you can take your, your, uh, your furry friends to the, to the beach now. Think about having some board games, those dark evenings. Uh, you might want to get some board games or some cards out. It's always useful to have a bit of entertainment when you get fed up of, I don't know, uh, the football, maybe, pubs. Don't forget your local pub. Um, they need your support as well. So uh, do go and enjoy a nice meal uh, and uh, support the local pub. Uh, probably best, obviously, if you don't drink and drive. Uh, goes without saying, really, isn't it? Uh, but uh, go and find a nice cosy pub with a, a roaring fire. It sounds good to me. Early nights. I don't, don't think you can beat the motorhome or a caravan for making you want to go to sleep. I, I just find it is sort of the coziest place ever and I, I tend to have more early nights uh, when I'm in, in the motorhome than, than when I'm at home and uh, can't beat warm cozy nights indoors tucked under a nice thick duvet. And when you're returning home don't forget if you've put water in the motorhome's tanks make sure you empty it before you leave. Uh, you don't want to be uh, traveling with water when it's freezing conditions, as I said earlier, and uh, you don't certainly don't want to get home and leave water in the tank with the possibility of it freezing when you're in storage or on the drive. If you possibly can, leave your motorhome's batteries on charge. Uh, I tend to leave my motorhome plugged in when I'm at home. I leave the heating on very low, but it does mean that the batteries are being charged. Now, if you can't do that when you're in storage, then you might want to consider taking your leisure battery out and putting it on trickle charge, perhaps at home. Uh, that's always a good thing. Batteries don't like being discharged for long periods. It does them no good at all. And that's, that's about it for me. Um, if you've got any winter touring tips that I've, perhaps I've missed or anything, or perhaps you want to add to it, let us know in the comments below. I uh, hope you found this interesting and do take care out there, but do enjoy your motorhome touring, or if you've got a caravan, your caravan touring in the winter. I don't think you can beat it. It's great to be out there, and I can't wait to get away at the moment. So thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye then.